Hello, all benders and non-benders, and welcome back to Avatar Generations. Today, we are going to be discussing the Dojo Master. Now, this guy is an original character for Avatar Generations, and was available in the Powerful Opponents banner, um, which used the green tickets, if you happen to have any of those, and had a pity rate of only 10. Um... I believe this is what they're going to do with most, if not all, of the powerful opponents' banners. So basically, they're OG characters. They let you get those a little bit easy. Fortunately, easy does not mean weak. This guy is actually pretty tough, and he has got some cool abilities that we're going to be diving into here. First ability I want to take a look at is his basic Mountain Strike. He'll deal empowered damage to one enemy and heal self for 30% of the damage dealt. What does that mean? Well, empowered damage, if you kind of just click on it here, he will actually increase his damage based on how many buffs he has on himself. So buffs like attack up, crit rate up, defense up, up to four of those will actually boost his damage. And then this basic actually has the built-in lifesteal with that 30% of damage dealt coming back to you as healing. That's something you'll notice with this guy is that he is extremely difficult to put down. If we go to his advance here, this is his AOE ability. He will actually do three hits to the enemy, um, to all enemies, and decrease their focus um, with this focus damage here. So he will tear the enemy's focus to shreds and stop them from doing any pesky um, pesky combo attacks just to keep them from really running wild. And then he actually grants himself some increased attack for a couple turns. So that kind of plays into his basic where at least one buff he can get himself very easily. Now, if we look at the skill mastery for this one, he does have his skill mastery buffs on his advanced skill. You'll notice that it gives some more buffs. Um, at master level 2, which is pretty easy to get, you do gain life steal for one turn. So basically the next hit you do will heal you even more. You might be noticing a trend here. Like I said, this guy is hard to kill. He is going to constantly deal very nice damage while healing himself. Um, and that is pretty cool. Adding on to this um, difficulty to kill him, he does get the 10% increased damage every time he uses this skill. Now this skill does have a very long cooldown, a cooldown of five turns, which is huge. Um, so it is gonna take you a little bit to use this one more than once, but if you are able to get it, then you do get the increased defense. Once again, adding to just his in general bulk. And then at mastery level four, which we can't access right now because the arena's not in the game yet, but he does get a 35% chance to enter a defiant state. I'm embarrassed to say I don't quite remember which one the Defiant State is. Um, but yeah, I think... Give me a second here. I think I do know another character that has this, so I'll be right back and then I'll be able to tell you for sure. Okay, so I wasn't able to find anybody with a Defiant Stance, but there are other characters with different kind of stances that do things like decrease the damage the enemy does or decrease their defense. So this is probably something along those lines. If I were to take a guess, it probably decreases the enemy's attack just to really add to his bulk. Um, so looking at the passive here, again, adding to that bulk reduces damage taken from non-combo attacks. So this kind of ties into the decreasing focus. As long as they're not using combos, their damage is going to be decreased by 30%. So, again, crazy damage reduction, which does increase if you are able to get some skill ups. Um, and then whenever he does defeat an enemy, he gets 50% turn bar. That means he'd be halfway to, turn, to taking a turn again whenever he kills somebody. Especially if he's able to get two people with his AOE, that basically gives him an extra turn without kind of the, the downsides of that. So that can turn out pretty cool. He is a bulky nightmare who can grant himself some buffs and is just impossible to kill just about. Now, of course, with a character like this, the obvious question is how should you build him? 
what I like to do here is I like to add on even more lifesteal. That might sound a little excessive, and maybe it is, but I do think a two set of lifesteal can really add to that bulkiness because if you're looking at the two set, that grants you 25% healing, which means that his basic will do healing for 55% total of the damage you deal. And then the two piece, I'd recommend either an attack set or maybe a crit or crit damage set, depending on your situation and kind of depending on the stats you get on all of these parts. Um, if you do get crit on this amulet here, that can really go a long way towards helping with that and helping you kind of crit reliably so you can get that increased damage. So you really, like I said, in my opinion, you want the life steal for as much healing as possible and then either attack, crit rate, or crit damage. Um, for the relic, or excuse me, the support, there's not actually a lot of options for him, funny enough. Um, there's this five star for the wolf spirit, which is pretty cool, but of course, you're not going to be getting a whole lot of this one, probably, unless you do just happen to get some crazy luck, or say, like, it pops up on another Peace Chaos banner, like for Aang. Other than him, there's not a whole lot of options that I know of. Um, being that he is a special, you could throw in the Lion Vulture just for some stats, but of course, Lion Vulture being a three star is not crazy. But if you do get it leveled up, then it's better than nothing. Um, as far as the special abilities, of course, if you do get the wolf, then great. You can get the 15% speed for the mind type characters on your team. Or you can get the 10% speed from a max tier uh, vulture, which is pretty easy because it's only a three star, so you're going to pull quite a lot of them. Um, and get that 10%. It really depends. Even though the vulture is smaller, don't discount that because let's say you have a team of Kyoshi Warriors with the dojo master they're all special element so even though the percentage is lower they would all get it and that might be preferable depending on your situation nice thing is he does have a few more options as far as his relic goes um his main best in slot relic based on his exile status is the wanderer's veil you actually if you did summon dojo master you definitely got one of these as well. The stats are attack and HP, and what it does is it will actually increase all of your stats by 17% on, I think the base is 15%. I did get one extra, so 17% when three allies are defeated in battle. So basically, if you're the last man standing, you're going to do a last stand situation where all of your stats are going to get jacked up which, in, which means you're going to do more damage, which means you're going to get more healing. You see where I'm going with this. Just trying to make him as hard to kill as possible. Additionally, you can use the Risky Cargo. That gives you some lifesteal, or a chance at lifesteal, if you do receive a weak hit. Can be helpful, kind of, you know, really play into that, um, giving him buffs and getting a lot of healing. And then this one's all right, too, where it gives you permanently increased defense. If you do get turn meter, which can be helpful if you're able to like put somebody down, you get that 50% turn meter and you get a little bit more defense. So this can play really well also. But his best in slot is probably the Wanderer's Veil just because it really plays into his style of being the last man standing and never dying. And that is about it. Um, with the Dojo Master... Of course, I'm sure he'll come around with another powerful opponent, but as I usually do say, I'd really recommend getting only one copy. You may have noticed I have two copies of the Wanderer's Veil. I did do another 10 pull because with these powerful opponents, if you get duplicates of them, since they're so easy, instead of becoming a mythic coin if you convert it, they actually convert into six Peace Chaos tickets, which is kind of interesting. It's... The, the jury's out on whether or not that economy is good. It really depends on your situation. 
Um, but that's just kind of something interesting with how the powerful opponents work when getting duplicates. Um, so as far as what to expect from these powerful opponents, um, I'm really hoping that the next one to come out is the pirate waterbender woman. Um, because if you've played the game at all, you're probably really down bad for waterbenders for that Inagi fight. So I'm really hoping that's going to be the next powerful opponent. Dojo Master is not as vital, because especially if you were playing early game, you probably got at least one Kyoshi Warrior. There's Sokka. Um, the, the, um, the special element heroes are a little bit more common. But nonetheless, Dojo Master is a fantastic unit who is going to be seriously bulky, and if you're having trouble with the Zuko boss fight, I think he would absolutely serve you well. So that's about all we've got for today. This guy is awesome, and yeah, if you did get him, great. If not, I'm sure he'll roll around again, and he's pretty easy to get, so it's not like you even have to worry about really saving for him. So yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed. hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video. Have a good one.